Today I want to talk about three very important differences between LET and VAR that will convince you to start using LET from now on. So let's get started. The first one is redeclaration. All right, so remember with VAR, you can simply redeclare any variable that you have previously declared. So if I try to uh, do VAR x equals one and then x equal, VAR x equals five, if I try to run this, you will notice that we don't get anything, any sort of error, no nothing. So if I try, let's say, let's print out at least the value of x here. That's all I want to see. As you can see, we get five. That means that the x, the first x with the value one was shadowed by the second one. So from here onwards, this x is like it never existed, right? And that's, and that can uh, create very hard to find bugs in your uh, software. Let's see what happens if we try to run the same thing, but with let. So same thing, just instead of var, we use let here. So let's do this, run it, and oh no, we get an error. Identifier x has already been declared. That's really nice. So it tells us that, okay, dude, you're shadowing. Basically, uh, you've already declared this. So to prevent you from shadowing this other x, it already tells you that when it tries to execute that, let statement, it tells you that, okay, well, this is already been declared and you cannot do this again. And the really cool thing about this one is that even if you try to overwrite it with a var in here, it's going to give you an error, right? Like so, see, so the same thing, even though we've declared it with var here, right? So any variable that was declared with let, it's going to be prevented from being redeclared. That's like really uh, a really nice feature that will prevent a whole slew of really weird bugs, right? All right, so the second one has to do with scoping, right? What is the difference in terms of scoping between var and let? Well, the difference is simple. Var is function scoped and let is block scoped. Now, what does that mean? That means that any variable that you've defined locally is defined locally for the nearest local function. That means that if you define a variable inside this function, it's going to be available for the whole function, right? So if I have here var i, I can use this i anywhere in my, in my function. Same goes with this x. So if I have this var x equals 17, I can use this x anywhere in here. That means that I can use it outside of the for loop defined, right? So, right, uh, like so. So let's take a look at what happens if we try to execute it. As you can see, we have this variable var x equals 17 and we are accessing it outside the for loop here. So if I try to run this, you will notice that we get x equals 17. That means that this x is actually available for the whole function because it's using var and it's function scope. Simple enough, right? But what happens if we try to do the same thing with let, right? So same thing, just instead of var, we just use let. That's all the difference in here. So if I try to run this, uh oh, you will notice that we get an error and it says x is not defined. That's because let is block scoped. What's a block? Well, simple, anything that is between curly braces. This is a block. This is a block and any pair of curly braces of, of open closed curly braces is a block, right? That means that this X is local only to this for loop. That actually behaves the same like any other popular language out there. So now one more thing here that has to do with uh, the previous, the previous difference between the two is instead of printing X, let's also print I. So I'm gonna copy and let me just type in I here and do the same thing down here. And let's try and run this one with var, right? So just using var here. Oh, well, you will notice that we get X equals 17 and I equals one. It's not an eight from here, even though we've defined one. It's this one, because any variable declared with var is local to the 
closest function, right? So that means that we've actually shadowed this i with this one. And what's the value of this one after we have executed the for loop? Well, it's one because we only just, uh, we, we want to just execute the for loop once because it goes from zero to one, right? And once it hits i equals one, it uh, gets out of the for loop and it prints out one. What do you know? Now let's see the same thing with let, but this time we're gonna just comment the x out because it's going to give us an error and never actually print out the i, right? So I'm gonna just save this and well, what do you know? You get the i equals a. That means that we got this i and we never actually shadowed this one. Isn't that nice, actually? This means that these, uh, any variables that you declare here inside the initialization part of the for loop is actually local to this scope. So that means that it's not accessible outside and it doesn't shadow. Now the third and last one is a little bit complicated and I hope you will understand it. So it's called variable hoisting and what this does is it does weird things when you declare variables further down the function. Right, so you know, variables with var, they are local to this function, right? So this var is available throughout this whole function. What happens if we try to use this variable before actually declaring it, actually getting to the declaring line? Let's take a look here. So if I try to run the one with var here, it's just a simple, right? It's just a simple test if it's undefined or zero for, you know, for that matter, but we're only gonna get undefined or five, right? and it just prints out a string here. So if I try to run this, you will notice that it says something's wrong. That means that we got to this line of code. That means that this one was defined, but it has the value undefined or null. We can actually confirm that it's the fault of the var declaration, because if you, if you just comment this out and you just have this, the interesting thing is that you get an error and it says number of cards is not defined because, well, it's actually not defined, right? But in this case, it's actually defined. This is due to variable hoisting. So let's take a look at what uh, value this has inside this. So let's take a look at what value this has inside the if statement, right? So if I say it's console log and just number of cards. If I try to run this after I clear the screen, You'll notice that we get undefined. That means that the interpreter, instead of actually interpreting the lines properly and telling us that this is not defined before it's been defined, what it does is copies the declaration here. It doesn't give it a value. The assignment is still left down there and it simply deletes this bar. And now it's more like what you would expect. Now, if you, if you run the code, this is what you would expect. The problem is <laughs> the interpreter does this automatically, so you don't know. This opens up another can of worms that may cause you a lot of headaches, right? Now, does the same thing happen with flat? Well, let's take a look here. No, of course. As you can see, we just get number of cards is not defined, simple as that even if we don't have this statement, we would get the same error, right? So it solves this issue. It doesn't let variables be defined before they were actually defined in code. So I hope you got something out of it, even if it didn't convince you to start using let from now on, I hope it, I hope it makes you understand what are the differences between, between the two. They are not, that different. They are not, it's not, it's not a scary monster. It's a really nice addition to the JavaScript keyword collection. All right. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time with more JavaScript this time.